All right, hello everyone. Um, so I finally finished my electrostatic battery, and this took me a long time uh, to build, to plan. Actually, I've been working on this project for about two years, um, but I never really had the time to work on it until this summer. Um, and so what we have here is, like I said, an electrostatic battery. What you see is a bunch of watch batteries all chained up together to form out about 500 what did I record? Five, five thirteen volts, but that's probably higher, uh, considering that it took a load just from measuring the voltage. But measuring it, I got about five hundred thirteen volts, and this uses about four hundred um, watch batteries. These are uh, what are these? SR six two six SW silver oxide watch batteries. Um, so I got them on DH Gate, bought a bunch of them. Uh, I think 1000 for about $20, but I just used a few. So very, pretty cost effective, I mean, when you compare to what you can actually do. But yep, uh, I chained a bunch of them together and produced it about, a f about a 500 volt difference. And since it's so high, you can actually start doing electrostatic projects. So what I did here is I made a really simple electrostatic pendulum that runs on 500 volts. Um, so this pendulum is just two sticks stuck together, um, two pieces of um, metal that I uh, hammered into the board, uh, into the uh, yeah, th into the wood, and then for the uh, the bob, what I did is I used the a uh, point seven um, pencil lead. Oop, focus, focus. All right, point seven pencil lead tied to uh, a cotton string. And that just oscillates between the two plates. One, two. Now, the current draw for this machine, because you're using electrostatic uh, forces rather than you know actual normal current, milliamp current, the current draw for this machine is really, really small. What I have here is um, oh, don't mind the circuitry, but right now it's just what I have here is a multimeter that's hooked up in series, and right now it's set to the current, and it is running. So you can see that you know current is flowing through. Albeit it's a very very small current. I set it right now to the lowest setting that I have for current 200 uh, microamps and that just shows nothing there. It's still running, but the current draw is just really really tiny um, Now I did some research and this is and I found that the current draw is probably around the nanoamps and a, a rough estimation or a rough way to actually uh, to actually measure your uh, microamp devices is to actually use the voltage setting on your um, multimeter, your your DVM digital voltage meter. So if uh, let me just disconnect the uh, connections for now. So so yeah, now you can see no currents being is flowing right now. Let me just change the settings to. Well, let me set it to off first. Uh, put back the power. Excuse me. So now it's off, and when I switch it to voltage setting, yep, now it starts working. So right now I set to 1000 volts. If you set it down to the lowest setting that you have, so 200 millivolts, um, you actually start to see some numbers. And the way you read it is that um, this is the nanoamps, and this is anything low below that. So what we're reading is about 2.74 nanoamps, which is really, really tiny, but I think that's really cool because you have a really, really, really efficient uh, system um, that makes the uh, the the power draw. Ah, uh, I forgot my numbers. I calculated this before, but it's been a week. Um, since I've done that. Oh, yeah, by the way, since the current draw is so spectacularly low, um, in theory, this machine can run for a very, very long time. I did some math, and theoretically, this machine can run for about uh, 1,000 years um, you know, in the theoretical sense. But considering the lifespan of these batteries, they will probably less, last around 10 years. Um, but this still can run for a very long time. Um, which is really fun. I mean, twenty, you know, two point seven nanoamps at about five hundred volts. Um, thanks to that super high voltage, you get a very efficient system, which is really fun. Um, chances are, this you know piece of lead would probably wear out first before you know using up all the electrochemical energy. Um, so, 
you know, I've, I've already tested this system and I started it at around um, a few, I think a week and a half ago. So it's been running for about 12 days um, and it's going strong. I mean, you can see, let me focus, you can see some residue, there you go, you can see some residue um, that's being scraped off from the lead, but uh, it's still running. Um, so now, right now, I'm going to do a test on what's the actual voltage necessary uh, to run the uh, electrostatic pendulum. So right now, it's running at, you know, the full 500 volts. Um, let me test it by I setting up a, a, a voltage divider. So what I have here are just a bunch of 22 mega ohm voltage, uh, 22 mega ohm resistors, and I'm going to set up a basic voltage divider and see if this pendulum can run in only one third the voltage. So let me set that up real quick. So let me just lift this up. So first we, so yeah, it's a bit scary to deal with 500 volts, but. I'm not dead yet, so that's cool. Uh, so, okay. And then we attach. So, right now, okay, one, two, three. And we're using the second from the last node. So, we should get about one third voltage. Let me push. Get off. Yeah. It's windy outside, so it's kind of hard to do stuff. There we go. Our windshield. And that does nothing. Did I connect it all right? Yeah, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Turns out I put my uh, multimeter in the wrong setting, so it's having issues. But okay, so here we go. Um, first setting it to two thirds of the total voltage that it's releasing. So right now this test system is using 6.8 microamps. So compare, so it's not as efficient as you know our previous system. Well, that's because most of the energy is going towards the voltage divider. Um, but yeah, 6.8 uh, microamps. Um, now, right now, it's running on two-thirds the voltage. So, you know, two-thirds of 50 volts. Um, so now, let's see if we can run on one-third the voltage. So, disconnect. See if I can restart it up. Uh, it's having some difficulties. So yeah, I guess it only has, it can run at about two thirds. Two thirds is a big, bit big, uh, why don't we try cutting it in half? Okay, so give me a sec. Alright, so I reconfigured the voltage divider so it's just cutting the voltage in half. And this seems to be its uh, minimum voltage. I mean it's twitching a bit, but it's just... I think it's at its limit at this point. So yeah, I mean, you know, I can make it run faster by making those two, you know, uh, plates come closer. Um, but my goal is to at least use up the first, you know, 50, uh, the first half voltage. So maybe running up to about 250 volts, um, you know, that's nice. So, but uh, what I want to show you is the how small the current draw is. I mean, this is electrostatic, so this can literally go through your skin. Uh, to demonstrate that, let me uh, figure this out. Uh, give me a sec. Alright, so uh, I reconfigured the system, and uh, what I did is I just hooked up this uh, the meter in series, and what I have here is the gap that I'll be playing with. So, you know, if I connect these two, uh, you would have a running pendulum, right? So this is directly in series, right? Now, in the open, it's pulling at about 0.43, whoop, actually, yeah, 0.43 nanoampere. So that's just leaking through the system. Um, but when we actually connect it directly in series, it's pulling at about 45, 44, oh, you know, so 4.5, 4.4, um, what do you call that? Nano, nanoampere. Since because it's so fantastically small, I can actually use my fingers through. So yeah, see this. So my fingers through the insulation of the alligator clips. If I just connect it through that, just by touching the two, 
the current going through my finger is enough to run the pendulum and right now it's running about yeah same thing 4.2 um, uh, nano amperes so this thing runs on fantastically small voltage oh it's fantastically small amperes um, but you know in order to travel across that 500 volts that's quite a lot so yep you know if I just put it right on top that should work too yeah low surface area so it's pulling at about 1.6 but it's still running let me push on it harder yeah there you go so you're running about 3.2 so yeah so right now I'm just prettying it up and fastening it into this little display case display clip but English display case um, but yeah, I plan to um, see how long this thing can run to the future. And I think it, I, it'll be really nice to, you know, graduate college and go through an internship and have a job, um, and still have this machine running. <laughs> so, you know, that's a bit optimistic, but I think it's a really fun project. Uh, so yeah.